It's time. It's episode 88 of the ATM Podcast. A man of much international broadcasting experience is Mark Watson, who joins me normally on a Tuesday, but away yesterday, so it's Wednesday. Martin Devon from the platform. We're going to discuss some transgender issues and the fact that Sport New Zealand are shying away, hiding, running uh, from Winston Peters, who wants them to enforce the coalition government agreement around whether those transitioning should be able to play in female sporting competitions and the answer to that is no i want to talk about the sky sport league presentation team what are the black caps worst ever performance at a white ball international tournament the blues is it theirs to lose it's a sellout final and andrew webster has he got his selections right this week with the warriors with tamari martin and sean johnson and also his comments about the melbourne storm if we can squeeze it in apologize to me But let us start. Look, I put a tweet out on the weekend about the Sky Sport League presentation team, Kimberly Downs, Honey Hedamini and Adam Blair. And I know that you know Adam as well. And I I prefaced the tweet by saying, listen, I've got nothing personally against any of these people, but professionally they are underwhelming. And I think for somebody that has done 25 years of sports broadcasting, and and you've done pretty much the same, mate, that we're in positions where we are qualified to be able to make assessments like this, judgments like this and comments like this. Well, that thing has been seen and shared by 25,000 people since, which is remarkable, mate. I mean, it's just a, it's just a comment, me observing while I'm watching, and yet so many people want to discuss it, want, 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 want to have a conversation about this. And overwhelmingly, and when I say overwhelmingly, 90-something percent of all the comments are agreeing with me. Look, Mark, again, let's just make sure this isn't personal, but when it comes to these jobs, they are a privilege, aren't they? And I don't know a single person that sits there and watches those three do this presentation and actually thinks it's a really good job that they're doing. You look, the whole presentation at Sky, and mate, I'd love to get on to Taylor Johnson and what's happening on the sideline at Super Rugby. Oh, well, that was just awful. I mean, let's just, just go there for a start because, I mean, I look, and I actually made mention of that as well. Like, you know, the constant interruptions and butting in, and here I've just done this to you. But the sideline commentary job is not a commentary job. Your job is to just tell us about HIA substitutions, maybe the, the crowd and what's happening there. But leave it to Nisbo and Justin. They're the people doing the commentary. I was just infuriated. It was so annoying, wasn't it? Oh, look, I was so looking forward to that game at 4.30. I really was, um, because I think no one really knew which way it was going to go. And I think that's what makes really good sport exciting. And then I heard her come on and I just, you know, suddenly my interest dropped to about 75%. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to put up with this for the next 80 minutes. And I'm thinking to myself, have you been a former All Black? Uh, What do you really know about rugby? And why are you there? And then I go back to Sophie Maloney and those running Sky, and you're there because, as I said, there's a feminist agenda that runs through this organisation, and this is about identity politics, and this is about equity of outcome, which is just a really, really dangerous ideology. Um, absolutely just just irritating. Uh, needs to, you know, the biggest problem is that there's no one in Sky who understands commentary who actually understands the art and the subtleties of it the ability of the silent pause what the roles are now i was very i I was very lucky when i started and i you know i was doing a lot of swimming commentary but i got my real big break at the beijing olympics in 2008 and i was lucky enough to work with john Macbeth, and i was around the likes of the brendan telfers and the keith quinns and i had a guy murray needham from tvnz who was excellent and said look you know you've got to just yeah just pull it back here a bit mark you don't need to jump on the back every time the lead commentator says something you don't need to fill every moment of the broadcast let it breathe um, you know, control your emotions at certain times. And there's no one offering that information. There's no one out there that can do that job. And, you know, Justin's job is to tell us, or is to basically upskill us, uh, maybe not necessarily use the word educators, but try and tell us things that we're not aware of, the subtleties of what's going on and why certain things led to a try or why the penalty was given or not given. The lead commentator's role is to do the play by bait, create a bit of excitement. Now, when a try is scored, um, you know, the natural thing is, so you might go, oh, that is a brilliant try in the corner, one of the great moments. Then you give it a moment and watch the players celebrate and you just sit back and look at the emotion on the team. Then it's the job of Justin then to come in and he wants to add a bit of excitement he can. And then he analyzes again, goes back through the replay and looks at what led to the try. 
I don't then need a third person on the sideline who's played one game of women's rugby for Samoa, then adding the third voice to it. I don't need it. No, I we don't. don't. Want no, to we know don't. It. no, we don't. No, we don't. It's totally, it's oh, totally oh, superfluous. And you're exactly right. It's just filling airtime, mate. And I actually think there's been a directive from Sky where the female voices have to have equal airtime as the male voices. Uh, look, so many people, and I and I won't read out the list of past All Blacks who contacted me over the weekend after this. Particularly, she. I mean, I've never, I've never heard a sideline commentator, and this, uh, you know, Taylor Johnson talk so much. She spoke more than Grant Nisbet did, mate. It was, it was just, it yeah. was infuriating. Yeah. No, but but this is it. Look, you know, look, I, I know, um, you know, I've had a little bit to do with Adam Blair. Um, I know Adam gets frustrated. He's actually asked for help. He wants help. He wants to get better. But there's no one within the Sky organisation. There, there aren't the Murray Needhams. There's not the old school. There's no one actually understands the subtleties and the skill set and those little things that go with commentary that can actually tell them, you know, keep what you're saying concise, keep it short. Um, you know, uh, maybe have a bit of an idea of where you're wanting to go with stuff. You know, be prepared for a comment, but make sure you've gone through it in your head and then keep it short. And, and just all of those little things. And, and you know, Ross, Carl and those in there that are involved in the sport production have no idea themselves. They're not going to be able to upskill and educate these guys. You know, you need to go back and get the John Macbeths and put them on contract and work with some of these commentators. The other thing, mate, one of the subtle things, and I learned this, is when you've got the referee talking to the players, all commentators shut up. Yep. Let's hear what Let the referee yeah, exactly saying. Right. Let's hear the colour. Let's go and hear what's being said to TJ Perrinar and what TJ's asking. Let's go on field and actually listen to that animated discussion. I don't need at that point you telling me, oh, oh, oh Marshy, Marshy, the crowd's really up for this today, Marshy. And it's like, stop calling him Marshy. His name is Justin Marshall. You didn't play with this guy. You don't have that right, you know, sometimes if it's, say, Ian Jones or Carmo or something, going, th their whole lives they've called each other that. Therefore, I don't have a problem with it. But it's all just a little bit too matey matey. I just want the best people, mate. And so, we're not getting the best it, people. Yeah. I mean, the that's whole it. Thing yeah. And let's establish that, you know, loud and clear. What we want is these are really privileged jobs. And you see how good they are, the, those that do them in Australia, those that do them in England, those that do them in the United States. We, are, we aren't employing the best people. We are employing no, people but, because we're actually ticking boxes and we're going for gender equity and all that kind of stuff, and, which I don't and, have a problem and, with, Mark, if you if you train these people and they are good at what they're doing, but they're not. And I go back to my original well, point about the league presentation panel. You know, what do you learn? after Kim Downs, Honey Hedemey and Adam Blair uh, present a game of the Warriors to you. What do you learn after that apart from nothing? Nothing. 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 Zero. And the problem is all it's put on for now is to create a bit more time to try and drive a bit more advertising. That's all that it is. is. Yeah. Now, yeah. And they'll say, they'll say, but it rates. It's like, no, it's no, not. No, it the doesn't rate. On, but no one's actually, but the TV's on, but no one's actually no, watching. No, one, no one listens to it, mate. Everyone mutes it. Everyone that I know mutes it or yeah. puts music on but, and waits till the game to start. Yeah, but but to give you an idea, this is not an easy game. Like I say, I, I did. I've done four Olympics, I think, three Commonwealth Games, World Games, um, Asian Games, Asian Para Games, um, uh, uh, Pan American Games. You know, I've been all over the world doing UCI bike. I only just feel now, Martin, that I'm in a good space with it. I only just feel now that I'm really truly starting to understand it. Some of these people have done nothing. I feel like almost they're just doing sort of. Um, you know, going out, they're still at university, a broadcasting school, and this is just, they're doing some sort of work internship, but a work experience. That's sort of almost what it sounds like on the sideline, doesn't it? You know, this share price that Sky has said in the past is 24 cents a share, mate. They just don't seem to get it. They still want to have their personal politics overriding good commercial sense. There's not a person I know, women don't watch sport. They don't. It's the men that are primarily watching it. Most women that sit down there and watch their rugby league are more than happy to watch the Fox stuff with pretty much an all-male cast. Now, they're sending, I think, five women reporters to the Olympic Games, Sky. Does any single one of them been down to the local pool and trying to take an understanding of the swimming? So when Lewis Clearbird and the likes of Erica Fairweather do well, they actually know what questions they're going to no, ask. No, no, mate, all they're doing is all they're doing is just filming themselves. No, no, Mark, it's not about that. It's not about that, mate. It's just about filming yourself on Instagram. That's what it is, and putting out posts saying, I'm going to the Olympics. That's what this is about. But, but look, TV I mean, give me a no, world feed. That's what I'm just saying, Sky. If that's yeah. the case, give me an alternative. If you want to employ these people, give us an alternative so that us yeah. uh, customers in your shop, subscribers to your business, the people who pay your wages have an alternative so we don't. And I'm not talking yeah. about the ACC giggle farty bollocks. I can't be bothered with that. Just give me somebody that's calling the games and calling yeah. the sport. 
but but Martin, you know, like I say, the 400 individual medley at the Olympics, Lewis Kleberg, the key length, it's the third length, the third, it's the sorry, it's the third 100, it's the breaststroke, it's absolutely vital, it's critical, the turns, the whole lot. Do you think any one of those post his swim are going to have any knowledge or ability to ask those questions? But look, TVNZ are just as bad. I mean, some of the uh, women cricket commentators they employ over the summer are just you just switch it off, it's just diabolically dreadful. Look, if it's men's New Zealand cricket team playing, let's just have all male commentators. Let's just do it unless the women can really genuinely offer something. If it's women's cricket, you go for it. You have all women's cricket if you want. No one's watching it anyway. But if you think that having all women commentators is somehow going to get the two and a half million women in this country off the couch watching it, good luck it with that. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, but I've, just, I, right. I've had a guts for We've made. spoken it's about this before, off. mate. It is. And look, you know, and you know, there's, you know, you can yell at us as much as you like, but women have to go and watch women's sport. And do a survey amongst all your women viewers. Do they actually want a woman on the sideline butting in every two minutes? It says a game of rugby, mate. And and the answer is going to be no. Apologize to me!